Hello, and welcome to this video on arithmetic sequences. This video is going to cover the class of sequences that we call arithmetic. A sequence would be arithmetic because you find a term that is always a fixed number larger than the previous term. So an arithmetic sequence is a linear function. Each term in the sequence will go up by a consistent amount. We're going to approach this topic by looking at the three formula that are displayed on the screen. We're going to start with the formula at the top of the screen, which gives us an alternate way of finding the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. And then later on in the video, we are going to start talking about finding the sum of the values in that sequence. So let's have a little look at the first formula in a little bit more detail. Okay, when we're dealing with arithmetic sequences, the first thing you need to know is the first term, the first number in the sequence, is usually denoted by A. And the common difference is usually represented by D. The common difference being the fixed amount that you go up or down from one term to the next term. So for example, in this arithmetic sequence here, you can see it's a linear function. You can see we're going up in a consistent amount. A is 6 because it's the first value. And the common difference is 2 because we're going up in 2s each term. For this one here, a is 11 because that is the first term in our sequence. And our common difference is negative 3 because we are subtracting 3 each time. If we think of that a little bit more generally, and we think of it algebraically, if we started with A, and A always represented the first term in the sequence, to get the second term in that sequence, we'd have to add on one of the common difference. Then to get the third term in the sequence, we'd have to add on two lots of the common difference. To get the third term in the sequence, we'd have to add on three lots of the common difference. So essentially, what we're doing for each term is we're adding on one less than the amount of terms we're dealing with multiplied by the common difference. So we could show that algebraically. And that's where we derive the first formula. A is our first term, and we're going to add on one less than the number of terms we're looking for multiplied by the common difference. So if I wanted to find the hundredth term in this sequence, and I knew the first term, I would do the first term added to 100 take away 1, so I'd be looking for 99 lots of the common difference. And this formula can be applied to any term once we know A, the first term, and D, the common difference. We can then find out any term in that sequence. Okay, let's have a look at a few examples. So I've displayed the formula at the top of the screen, so we're really getting to know that formula and how to apply it. Let's have a look at the first question here. Here is a sequence, 5, 9, 13, 17. Find the 21st term in this sequence. Here's what my working out looks like. I'm asked to find the 21st term. Let's see what I already know from the sequence. I know that A is 5 because that's my first term, and I know my common difference is 4 because I'm going up in 4s each time. So I know my A value is 5, my N value is 21 because that's the term I'm interested in, and my D value, my common difference, is 4. I go ahead and substitute those three things into the formula. And so I'm left with 
20 times 4, and then I'm going to add on my first term, which was 5. So when I simplify everything, I end up with my 21st term being 85. So essentially, I found my A value, my N value, and my D value from the information in the question and substituted it into this formula. Let's go ahead and do the same for this question here. For the sequence 6, 11, 16, and 21, find the 50th term. Okay, so I know my A value, my first term is 6, and I know my common difference, my D value, is 5 because the sequence is increasing by a fixed number each time, and that fixed number is 5. My n value is 50. So essentially, when I substitute my n value in and subtract 1, I'm going to be dealing with 49 and multiplying that with the common difference. Let's have a look at my working out. Here's my original formula. I'm going to go ahead and substitute in my A value, my N value, and my D value. 50 take away 1 leaves me with 49. So then I'm going to calculate 49 times 5 and add on my A value of 6, which tells me that the 50th term in this sequence would be 251. Okay, so here's a task for you to have a go at. Using the formula we've just discussed on the previous slides, could you find the 20th term and the 100th term in each of these four sequences? They are arithmetic sequences because each sequence is going up by a fixed number each time. So could you use the formula to find the 20th and the hundredth term. Could you pause the video now and have a go at these questions? Okay, welcome back. I'll just display my answers on the screen. There we go. So for each sequence, I've identified my A value, so whatever my first term is, my D value, whatever the sequence is increasing by or decreasing by each time. And my N value to find the 20th term would be 20. And my N value to find the 100th term would be 100. Substituting those known values into the formula will help me find my answers displayed in blue here. Could you take a little bit, bit of time to assess your work and mark up your work? And if there is any errors, if you could try and highlight those errors and those misconceptions. Very well done if you were able to find all eight answers. I'm now just going to introduce two further formula. You can see they're displayed here. They were displayed on the first slide in this video. When we're dealing with arithmetic sequences, you may often be asked to find the sum of the terms in an arithmetic sequence. A couple of things to be aware of at this point is when we start talking about and using the language of sum of or adding the terms together, we can now start talking about an arithmetic series. So when you're finding the sum of terms in an arithmetic sequence, it may be referred to as an arithmetic series. You may also see that when I go to ask the question, and I've displayed the sequence 5, 9, 13, 17, you might see this notation with add signs in between each term just to show that you're working towards a sum of the terms involved in the question. Okay, so let's have a little look at how to apply these two formula. What this notation means is that we're going to find the sum of the terms up to a certain term asked in the question. 
So for example, in my, in my question here, I'm asking you to find the total of all the terms added together for the first 21 terms in this sequence. So I want to add together all the terms in this sequence from the first term to the 21st term. So I'm just going to focus on this formula first. You can see that again, I need to know N, A and D. There's also another N involved here. Here's my working out. So from this sequence here, A is my first term, which is 5. D is my common difference, which is 4, because that fixed amount that it's increasing by is 4. And N in this question is 21, because I want to know the sum of the first 21 terms. So I start with my formula and I go ahead and substitute in all those values I've just found from the question. My n value, which is used twice in the formula, my a value, and my common difference, my d value. Then I just go ahead and calculate this. So I've got two lots of my first term added to one less than the amount of terms I'm dealing with multiplied by the common difference. So I'm just going to go ahead and subtract 1 from 21 to leave me with 20. And I'm also going to double my first term to leave me with 10. So then I'm going to go ahead and do 20 times 4, which is 80. Add on the 10 gives me this 90, which leaves me with a half of 21, which is 10.5, multiplied by 90 is telling me that if I added all 21 terms in this sequence together, their sum would be 945. I'm just going to approach the question in a different way this time. So I'm going to use this formula. You can see there's a difference because this time I want to find the sum of the terms, the first 21 terms again. But this time the question also gives me the last term I'm interested in. So the 21st term is given to me. So then I can go ahead and use the smaller version of this formula. I still need n and I still need my first value, my first term of a. But I can also include L, which represents the last term I'm interested in. So for this working out, it would look something like this. So I'm starting with N over 2 multiplied by A plus L. A is 5, my first term. L is the last term I'm interested in, so my 21st term, which is 85. The question gives me that. And then I'm going to half my n value to again be dealing with 10.5. Once I add the 5 to the 85, I'm left with the same calculation here. 10.5 multiplied by 90 gives me 945 as the sum of the first 21 terms in that sequence. You can see that we have two different formula leading us to the same answer. This formula is usually applied when you know the last term that you're interested in. If the question here did not give me the number 85, I could use the previous formula discussed in this video to find my 21st term. And then I could use that as my last term. So we could use this formula alongside the formula we've discussed on the previous slides. Both formula are needed for your test and exams. Usually this one would be applied when you are not aware of the last term. And if you were aware of the last term, you would apply this formula. Both are going to lead you to the same answer. Okay. So here is some questions for you to have a go at. If you could pause the video at this point, 
read each question carefully and then show me some full working out how you would go ahead and answer these four questions using the information and the formula we've discussed in this video. Could you pause the video now, please? Okay, welcome back. I'll just go ahead and show you my worked solutions. And they look like this. So for the first question, you can see I've highlighted A, my first term, D, my common difference, and N, how many terms I'm interested in. So if we go back to the original question, term one is four, there's my A value. Term two is nine, which means my common difference has to be five, because I'm already told it's an arithmetic sequence. There's an arithmetic series involved. And I want to know the sum of the first 31 terms, so my n value is 31. A very similar approach for question two. For question three, we're dealing with the first 40 multiples of six. So we're still going to go ahead and use this formula. My n value would be 40 because I want the first 40 multiples. The first multiple would of course be 6. The second multiple would be 12, making the common difference also 6. So once I've identified A, D and N, I can go ahead and do my substitution to find my final value. Similar approach with the fourth question here. We need to work out A and D from the wording of the question. And we could do a little division to find out our n value. How many multiples of 3 would fit in between the two values in the question? Once we've identified these three values, substitution, calculation leads to our answer. Very well done if you were able to answer those four questions. Two more questions for you to have a go at here. For each question, could you read the question carefully? Apply your knowledge of what we've learned so far in the video to have an attempt at each question. Could you show me your full working out? And when you unpause the video, I'll talk you through my worked solution for each question. Could you pause the video and have a go at these questions now? Okay, welcome back to the video. If we look at the first question here, let's have a look at how we would work out this question. So essentially this question is asking us to find the sum of the first 10 terms of an arithmetic series, but the question has just been placed in a little bit of context. Carol's starting salary is 20,000 pounds, so our A value is 20,000. That's the first term in the arithmetic series. And she's given an annual wage rise of 500 pounds. So my D value, the common difference, is going to be 500. I want to know how much she earns in the first 10 years of her new job. So my N value is going to be 10. So the question gives me all three values. So then I go ahead and look at my formula, substitute in N, substitute in A and substitute in D. So my calculation will look like this. 10 divided by 2, 10 being my N value. Two lots of A would be 40,000. N minus 1 would be 9 and my common difference of D, 500. When I go ahead and calculate this value, I'm left with the total amount of money Carol would earn in the first 10 years of her new job, 222,500 pounds. The second question here is a little bit different. We need to create an equation and solve it to find D, to find the common difference. Our starting point is going to be this formula. What we know from the question is our N value is 20 because we're dealing with the sum to the first 20 terms. 
My A value is 4 because I'm dealing with an arithmetic series and I'm told the first term is 4. And we also know that this equals minus 15. So I know that the result of this is negative 15. What I don't know is this D value here. So what I can go ahead and do is substitute in my values and create an equation equal to minus 15. 20 divided by 2. This is double my A value, which gives me 8. This is one less than my N value, gives me 19. And then 20 divided by 2, of course, is going to be 10. When I expand out the bracket, 10 times 8 is 80. 10 times 19D is 190D, and that's still equaling minus 15. Then I can go ahead and solve this for D by subtracting 80 from each side and then dividing each side by 190 to tell me that my d value, my common difference, is minus a half, minus 0 0.5. Very well done if you were able to get this answer, as this is a slightly different question to what we've seen in the previous slides of the video. Okay, last task for you to have a go at. So what I've displayed on the screen here is some very typical and some very challenging exam questions. I would like you to pause the video, have a go at all four questions, show me your full algebraic working out, and see if you can find the solutions to each of the exam questions. When you unpause the video, I will show you my full work solutions so you can mark and assess your own work. Could you have a go at these questions? Could you pause the video now? Okay, welcome back. So I will just go ahead and show you my work solutions. My work solutions look like this. So you can see for question one, we're applying the, the formula a plus n minus one multiplied by d, and we're applying it twice with the information the question gives us to actually leave us with a set of simultaneous equations. Then we can remove the a in order to go ahead and find the common difference, which will lead us to our first term. Simultaneous equations are needed for the question over here as well. And then you can see my working out for the third and fourth question down the bottom. So hopefully I've shown you enough information on there for you to go through and assess your own work, highlighting any errors or misconceptions. Very well done if you were able to answer these four correct as they are very challenging exam questions. If you were able to answer all four correct, that is brilliant. You've shown a very good understanding of arithmetic sequences.